Today, we give them the recognition they so richly deserve. Now, since 2020 was a year that made us acutely aware of the heroics of our emergency responders, it's fitting that our first award winner is a historian who has drawn our attention to emergency responders of days gone by. Well, that, along with many other facets of local history. And that's why Matt Maris, the creator of Local Historia, is this year's winner of the Education and Advocacy Award. First, about those emergency workers. When Matt learned that 2020 was the 150th anniversary of the Logan Fire Company, he did what he always does. He went for a walk. In this case, a tour of the Logan Firehouse. Writing about his experience on Belfont.com, he described days gone by when Center County had only citizen bucket brigades to fight fires. Then in 1865, the so-called Great Fire ravaged an entire block on the west side of South Allegheny Street in Belfont, claiming the Pennsylvania House, now the site of the Brockerhoff. The borough subsequently bought a hose carriage that could be filled with buckets of water to be pumped out of hoses. And by 1870, they had created the Logan Fire Company number one. Sadly, the Great Fire turned out to be one of many great fires, but as Matt recounts, the Logans upgraded to a steam fire engine, then motorized engines. Along with upgrading their technology, they acquired ever more suitable fire stations along the way. Matt also writes about the Logan's cooperation with neighboring and sometimes rival fire companies, notably the Undines, as they fought blazes throughout the county. And he notes the community involvement that has traditionally made the Logans more than just volunteer firefighters, from their hosting of balls and masquerades in the 19th century to their involvement today in parades, carnivals, school fairs, and fire prevention activities. The essence of Matt's approach to history is summed up by this line in his story. Walking into the oldest fire company in Center County, you can immediately feel its history and kinship, like walking into a deeply loved Pennsylvania deer hunting camp. Everywhere Matt turns in Center County, he finds history and kinship. He grew up in the South and his family moved around, as, so as a child, he never felt like he had a local history. Then he moved to Belfont and he soon discovered that it was, in his words, a laboratory of American history. His interest in local history took off about five years ago while doing an internship with the Center County Library and Historical Museum for his master's degree in history. The library offered weekly summer walking tours. Matt became a volunteer tour guide. As his research took him ever deeper into the past, Matt was determined to share what he was learning which is something that does not surprise anyone who knows him. Matt's been teaching history for six years at the Belfont Area High School. So he understands the thrill of igniting a spark of interest or curiosity or understanding in his students and whetting their appetite for more discoveries. Belfont's rich local history inspired him to move beyond the classroom by expanding the walking tour offerings that are available to the general public. In the summer of 2019, he started Local Historia an organization devoted to providing tours around town. Matt will customize a walking tour to focus on special topics, such as Center County's iron industry, its Native American past, its airmail history, and Black Civil War veterans. He has also created bus tours, cemetery tours, ghost tours, and school tours, each inspired by his own curiosity about the lives of those who came before us. Last year, he began planning private car tours that would encompass a wider swath of history than a walking tour allows. Although the pandemic put the kibosh on his idea of a hitchhiking historian for now, Matt continues to keep local historia active with Facebook, a website, and a YouTube channel where you can take virtually guided driving tours with Matt and plenty of detours into history to share his appreciation and knowledge about Center County's past. In his History of the Logans, Matt noted the fire company's age-old motto that might well serve as his own. Where duty calls, there you will find us. For embracing a duty to share Center County's unique past, Matt Maris is this year's winner of the Education and Advocacy Award. Congratulations, Matt. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Katie. Uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, yes, I 
would like to thank uh, the Center County Historical Society. I mean, much of what I do is, is interpretation. You know, that's my, I feel like my role as an educator and as a public historian is I enjoy interpretation and engaging people with history in new ways and different ways and, um, and like the things you just talked about. And, but I couldn't do that without organizations like the Center County Historical Society and the Center County Library and Historical Museum and Belfont.com. Everybody's been so supportive. And I am kind of sharing decades and decades, like you just mentioned, of history and preservation that's, that I had nothing to do with, but I, I'm privileged to, to share uh, through, through my research and things like that. So um, it's a great county to live in. Like you said, I found my home here. Uh, I'm raising my family here. And it's uh, not only a place with lots of rich history, but lots of people who are passionate about the history like myself and lots of people who support what I'm doing uh, with open arms, um, like Belfond.com, like, like the Historical Society, like Leadership Center County. So many people are very passionate and see the value like I do in local history and, and its many applications. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. We're glad you're one of us. One of the popular sites on Matt Maris's walking tours is the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial in front of the County Courthouse in Belfont. And thanks to our next award winner, a preservation-minded group of Center Countyans, the monument to our veterans is standing stronger and gleaming as brightly as it did in 1906 when it was erected. For their timely action in saving this stately monument, this year's recipients of the Award for Preservation and Restoration include Center County Commissioners Steve Dersham, Mark Higgins, and Michael Pipe, Sue Hannigan, and Alan Popovich along with conservators Alberto and Alec Romero. To understand the significance of what was at stake, let's go back in time to the Civil War era. Governor Andrew Greg Curtin, a son of Belfont, is Pennsylvania's governor. When it becomes apparent in 1861 that war between the states is inevitable, he issues a call for volunteer soldiers and establishes an 80-acre military training camp, Camp Curtin. Between 1861 and 1865, more military units were established at Camp Curtin than anywhere in the North. And at least one historian has asserted that no Pennsylvania county of its size contributed more men, training, leadership, and moral support than Center County, whose soldiers helped to form the backbone of the Army of the Potomac. Half a century later, around the 50th anniversary of the Civil War, Communities around the country began memorializing their local veterans, not just those who had fought in the Civil War, but veterans of the American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Mexican War, the Spanish-American War, and the Philippine Occupation. Center Countyans were quick to join the national effort to honor veterans. The Soldiers and Sailors Memorial was designed by Joseph Houston, who also designed the Pennsylvania State Capitol and it was installed by Van Amridge Granite Company of Boston. That was one of the most prominent and prolific creators of Civil War monuments, and its works dot the battlefields of Gettysburg and Antietam. The Soldiers and Sailors Memorial was dedicated in 1906. The memorial's focal point was a statue of Andrew Greg Curtin. Surrounding him were 20 bronze panels inscribed with the names of Center County veterans. Fast forward to the next century when signs of old age began to appear. Mortar failure threatened the structural integrity of the memorial. Granite surfaces were fracturing into layers. Spider infiltration added places where water collected and began to break down the stone. Alarmed by the deterioration, Sue Hannigan sought a Keystone Historic Preservation Construction Grant. The grants are awarded each year to local governments and nonprofit organizations by the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission for the purpose of preserving publicly accessible historic resources. Sue was the right person for the job. For the past few decades, she's been active in efforts to link that link historic preservation to community revitalization and economic development. In her years in the Center County Planning Office, she helped to write and administer more than $20 million worth of Center County projects. She also helped to create a county inventory of veteran memorials and monuments for the American Legion's national database. Only one memorial was listed when she started. There were 65 when she finished. Sue knows her memorials and she knows grant writing. 
But like many grants, matching funds were needed. That's where Center County's commissioners stepped in. Understanding both the monument's historic significance and the community's attachment to it, the commissioners secured the mandatory match that enabled them to contract with New Orleans-based fine arts conservator, Alberto Romero. Enter local architect, Alan Popovich. He worked closely with Romero to evaluate the scope of the damage and to document the deterioration in order to devise a restoration plan that would keep the monument true to the original artist's intent. Then came the heavy lifting phase. They cleaned the monument, stabilizing the granite to prevent further decay and reviving the patina of the metal sculpture and plaques. Over the course of months, they grinded, cleaned, repointed and resurfaced the stone. They removed the bronze plaques to treat them for corrosion and stain removal. Finally, the conservators recut the lettering that had eroded from the plaques so that all the textual details were restored and could be read. After applying protective coatings, the plaques were reinstalled. Part of the project included a plan of preventative maintenance to ensure the long-term survival of Center County's tribute to its men and women in uniform. Gleaming like new, the memorial was rededicated in November of 2018, fittingly on Veterans Day. For inspiring, funding, overseeing, and assisting the conservation of the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial, this year's award for preservation and restoration goes to Sue Hannigan, Alan Popovich, Commissioners Steve Dersham, Mark Higgins, and Michael Pipe, and, conservator, and conservators Alberto and Alec Romero. And I should note that this conservation project was also recognized with an award in 2020 by the statewide organization, Preservation Pennsylvania. So a double congratulations to all of you. Accepting the award virtually are Commissioner Michael Pipe and Sue Hannigan. Michael Pipe, would you like to go first? Sure, well, thank you so much, Katie, and to the uh, Center County Historical Society. One of the things that we really cherish here in Center County government more than anything is the courthouse that is seen by our citizens and residents in this community as a place of justice, fairness, uh, and equality. And uh, we are so humbled to have as a touchstone and a, and a um, focus of the courthouse, this terrific monument uh, uh, that, that it recognizes the service of our veterans uh, from generations and generations ago. Um, and as you mentioned, rightfully, uh, uh, Andrew Curtin played such a prominent role in this community uh, by being a leader almost 150 years ago that it's also a tribute to him as well and the dedication he, he brought to preserving our union. Uh, I think as you mentioned, this was a, a large effort and it was many people who had our uh, focus on this. Um, from the commissioner's standpoint, we saw this as a, uh, an absolute need. Uh, as we all know from preservation, the longer something goes to, to fix something, uh, the more expensive it costs. And um, we now have a maintenance schedule that allows us to keep this monument and statue uh, preserved in the future. And it will allow, uh, again, countless other people to come and recognize the sacrifice and service of many people here in Center County uh, throughout the generations. And so it's really humbling on the behalf of the Board of Commissioners to be here today to say thank you for recognizing this, but we could not have done it out without the team. The heavy lifting, as you say, with Sue, Alberto, and Al, and everybody else who helped make this happen. So it was a wonderful project, and we look forward to having many, many uh, uh, visitors and guests come by our courthouse in Belfont to visit it and say hello. So again, thank you, Katie, very much. And Sue, would you like to say a few words? Uh, you're muted. That there. happens to me all the time. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank uh, the Historical Society for this recognition as a participant in this uh, worthy project. And yesterday, while I was thinking about the meaning of this award, I wrote down three words that I thought embodied the project from my viewpoint, from its point of dedication until today. And those words are honor, commemoration, and remembrance. Um, having administered millions of dollars of grant funds, which you mentioned over my career in public service, this project is by far, um, I believe my most meaningful effort. 
because of uh, what it is not, and conversely, what it is and what it represents. It was not new construction and it was not planned development. Um, it was the preservation of a very valuable historic resource that commemorates people, and that is so important. Um, this June will mark the 115th anniversary of the dedication of the memorial and monument. And I hope we all continue to honor, commemorate, and remember, as stated on the memorial, those who died to keep the nation whole. Uh, thank you again for this recognition and congratulations actually to all the recipients today. Uh, and thank you again to the Historical Society and it's all its members for recognizing this valuable project. Thank you, Sue, and thank you, Mike. And again, congratulations. Let me echo Sue's congratulations to all of you. Our next award winner has likewise explored Center County's contributions to the nation's war efforts. On the 100th anniversary of World War I, Ken Hickman launched an exhibit at the Penn State All Sports Museum titled Field to Front, Nittany Lions Go to War, 1917 to 1919. The exhibit featured letters, stories, photographs, medals, and other personal belongings of the Penn State students, faculty, and staff who answered the call to arms. The group included more than 200 student athletes or alumni varsity letter winners. It's just one example of the commitment to local history made by Ken Hickman, director of the Penn State All Sports Museum, and this year's winner of the History and Heritage Award. First, a note about the museum. It was created as part of the most recent expansion of Beaver Stadium. The All Sports Museum opened its doors in February of 2002 and attracted more than 1,400 visitors on opening day. Museum goers could experience the sights and sounds of game day and watch films documenting some of the proudest moments in Penn State's sports history. Ken arrived in 2006 and soon began expanding the scope of the museum's mission and collections. His arrival marked a return to his alma mater, and he brought back to Center County his expertise as a museum curator and director of development. He had acquired those skills at the USS Constellation Museum in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, where his museum consisted of a decommissioned tall ship, the USS Constellation, which began its life intercepting slave ships in the mid 19th century and is the last Civil War era ship that is still afloat. In his 15 years at the All Sports Museum, Ken has routinely looked for opportunities to use athletics as a lens for looking at larger issues. So, for example, he has featured programs that focus on desegregation and gender equality as they played out in classrooms and locker rooms and on the fields of athletic competition. But Ken's special interest is in military history. And as the centennial of World War I drew near, he recognized that it was an occasion to study a period in Penn State's history that hadn't previously been examined in great detail. That wasn't for lack of material. Ken notes that since the war was America's first major overseas conflict, every organization seemed to have documented its participation. Penn State College, as it was known at the time, was no exception. In his initial research, Ken relied heavily on a compilation by the Alumni Association published in 1919 and titled Penn State in the World War. The Alumni Association had sent out surveys asking the returning veterans what they had done in the war. Most of the vets responded, enough to fill a book. Ken then cross-referenced those respondents with student athletes of the period and came up with 210 names. Employing a strategy known as forward genealogy, he searched for the living descendants of about 40 students from the original list. To his delight, Ken got about a 90% response rate to his inquiries. Many family members shared letters, photos, and other artifacts. They also had stories to share, and each one enriched Ken's exhibit a bit more. Then there was the outreach component. On Veterans Day weekend in 2019, the All Sports Museum teamed up with the Bullsburg Military Museum to showcase a military appreciation day at Beaver Stadium. Among the pregame activities outside the stadium were replicas of medical aid tents and casualty evacuation tents, complete with reenactors in World War I dress. The World War I exhibit was so widely appreciated that Ken is taking a similar approach to a World War II exhibit that he had been planning when the pandemic forced the closure of the museum. 
Ken is still hopeful that the exhibit will open close to the 80th anniversary of America's entry into the war in December of 1941. Between the wars, Ken has put together plenty of other exhibits at the All Sports Museum. One of the most popular is the exhibit that features Penn State's undefeated football teams that did not win national titles. It's a fan favorite, Ken says, comparing it to a Marvel movie. But the World War I exhibit, now that is his Oscar movie, an epic exhibit and one for the ages. For his work on the World War I exhibit and for 15 years of collecting, curating, and sharing Penn State history through the lens of sports, we're pleased to present the History and Heritage Award to Ken Hickman and the Penn State All Sports Museum. Congratulations, Ken. Would you like to say a few words? Sure, thanks. Uh, uh, certainly, th you know, thank, thanks, Katie. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, CCHS, Mary's entire team. You're, you're down the hill from us you know, for this wonderful honor, as well as our entire staff at the All Sports Museum. You know, I like to think it's truly a team effort and the work you know, wouldn't get done if we didn't all pull together and have each other's backs. Um, you know, I think we've found in these challenging times that the role of historic preservation in museums has never been more important. Um, events around the nation have shown us that a failure to fully address you know, the issues of the past make it very difficult for us to move forward you know, in any type of strong or, or united way. Um, you know, with that, you know, I think museums have a central role to play in educating our communities about these issues and serving as centers for engaging with the past. You know, I think the work we do, while always meaningful, has never been more important and certainly has never been more, more of a priority you know, than it is at this time. And so you know, thank you again for this honor and let's all you know, keep looking to the past to help you know, give us a roadmap for the future. Here, here, Ken, thank you. Our next honoree never set out to be a preservationist or a historian, but Rebecca Inlow has become both. It began in 2015 when she was invited to join the board of directors of the nonprofit Roland Theater in Phillipsburg. Rebecca is a journalist by training and the former editor of the Clearfield Progress. So it was only natural that her first assignment as a board member would be to write a pamphlet for the theater's centennial celebration in 2017. But Rebecca missed her deadline because the more she researched the landmark building, the more convinced she became that a pamphlet could never do justice to its rich history. So at the 2017 centennial, there was no pamphlet, but a couple of years later, there was a book, The Roland Story, Beauty from Ashes. For the volunteer labor of love that went into this eloquently written and lavishly illustrated book, and for the subsequent labor of limbs that she has poured into the Roland Theater, Rebecca Inlow is this year's recipient of the Support and Volunteerism Award. Like virtually everyone who grew up in the Phillipsburg Osceola region, Rebecca has early memories of the Roland. Her first, in the 1960s, her dad took her and her brothers to see 101 Dalmatians. They sat in the balcony and in her memory, the balcony bar blocked her vision forcing her to constantly reposition her head to see the action on the screen. Decades later, she was in the upper balcony one day and scrunching down in her seat, she realized it must have been exactly where she had been in that long ago memory. It was like time traveling and it reinforced for Rebecca the importance of preserving a majestic building like the Roland that forms a powerful and evocative link between a community's past and its present. The title of Rebecca's book refers to the fact that the theater was built in downtown Phillipsburg on the site once occupied by the Pierce Opera House. That elegant three-story building burned to the ground in a 1910 fire. The property was bought by Charles Rowland, a coal and railroad magnate, and eventually a member of Congress. Rowland oversaw the construction of the theater and on its debut in 1917, he declared, I have felt that we should have a theater building in Phillipsburg of size, safety, and perfection of appointment that would anticipate the future, maintain our best past traditions, reflect a progressive spirit while affording us a place to spend a delightful evening at home. His statement has become Rebecca's mantra. Her three and a half years of research for the book took her throughout central Pennsylvania into Roland family archives, county genealogical societies, historical museums and libraries, and courthouse records where her journalism background served her well. She uncovered lost chapters of Charles Rowland's early life, 
and followed leads that led to the discovery of sidebar stories related to Roland, such as the criminal charges brought against his former employer in a tawdry murder mystery in Philadelphia. You're going to have to buy the book to hear more about that one. Her missed deadline proved to be a stroke of good fortune because the celebration held for the 100th birthday of the theater could now be included in the book. Once she finally sent the manuscript, manuscript off for publication, Rebecca wasn't sure how she would fill her hours now that she had no more research and writing to do. But turns out her spirit of volunteerism meshed perfectly with the needs of the Roland Theater. In its prime, the 1000 seat theater was a showcase with Renaissance inspired murals on the walls, plush seats, an ornately decorated stage and ceiling and a series of stained glass window panes above the entrance. But the decades took their toll and the theater's finances reflected the booms and busts of the local economy. The Roland family sold the property in the 1940s and its fortunes waxed and waned until 1990. That's when the Phillipsburg Bor Borough bought the Roland and leased it to the nonprofit Roland Theater Group. And Rebecca Inlow took the stage. Like the, theater manage like the theater's manager, Kevin Conklin, who won this award in 2016 for his volunteer work at the Roland, Rebecca has become a jack of all trades. She volunteers everywhere from the projection room to the concession stand. And on days and evenings when the theater isn't open to the public, it's not unusual to find her there, painting, patching or cleaning bathrooms. Currently, she's working on a seating project that entails replacing worn out cushions and plugging some holes in the floor beneath the seats. And as if her blood, sweat, and tears isn't enough, Rebecca is also donating the proceeds from the sale of her book back to the theater. Rebecca is optimistic about the Roland's future and is using the current slowdown to consider additional projects, such as restoring the original coat room, where long ago theater patrons would have left their fur wraps and woolen capes. The list of projects never ends, she says, nor does, wink, wink, the need for more volunteers for those of you who may be interested. For her extraordinary commitment of time and talent to preserving the Roland Theater and to sharing its story, Rebecca Inlow is this year's recipient of the award for support and volunteerism. Congratulations, Rebecca. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you. That was, that was very nice of you. Um, I appreciate that. I'm currently at the theater right now um, Kevin Conklin, our manager, he's broadcasting this Zoom call on our big screen. And in the auditorium, we've got some Roland board members and some friends, and they've made it a very nice day for me. Um, and I'm, the picture I have behind me is just a picture, so I'm not really in the auditorium right now, but it's a beautiful photo. Um, I attended my first historic uh, preservation awards ceremony a few years ago when Kevin did get his award. And I saw then how important and special this occasion was. And so I really appreciate this award and, and what it means. Um, I had asked Kevin, what should I say today? And his exact words to me were, keep it short. So I'm gonna try, um, but I'm not good at speaking off the cuff. So I do have a few words written down. Last weekend, a few of us were at the theater working to clean out the basement. The projects never end at the theater, and this one had us dirty and sore. While we were working, one of our board members, Jerry Lease, asked, why are we here? He explained that he was not referring to being in the basement, but to the theater in general, and what was it that keeps us coming back? None of us really had an easy answer to that, but it made me think. When I was researching and writing the book, the one thing that really stuck out for me was what it took and what it has taken to keep this theater alive. The Roland Theater has had a roller coaster ride throughout its 104 years of existence, and we are currently riding down a pretty good dip right now. And its doors were almost closed several times in the past. And each time this community would not let it die. So many people worked tirelessly in the past to save the theater and our volunteer manager and board members and friends of the theater have picked up the gauntlet to continue the work of preserving this beautiful treasure. I love being a part of such an important effort. There's something about this place that draws us in and keeps us here. The Roland Theater is a history lesson for generations of children and adults who come through its doors. 
I'll loop back to Jerry's question, why are we here? I still don't have an easy answer for that, but I do know that I am so grateful and blessed to be here. I hope that a hundred years from now, someone will be working on the sequel to the first book, chronicling the theater's second century. I hope it will have been a good one. Thanks again to Mary and Katie and the entire Center, Center County Historical Society. Thank you to my Roland family. You've all given me a special day. Thank you. Congratulations again, Rebecca, and enjoy your day. I think what I miss most about being on Zoom is all the great treats that we typically have afterwards at our reception. So I'm glad you're getting one. Thank you. Our next award is the Historical Society's President's Award. It's given by the president of the Board of Governors to honor an individual or group who over an extended period of time has furthered the Historical Society's efforts to preserve, interpret, and promote the richness of Center County. Since it was established in 1989, the award has typically gone to a volunteer or committee whose long-term efforts have made a significant impact in the Historical Society's education and preservation efforts. This year, the award goes to a very special group of volunteers. The Stocking Stuffer Committee, headed in recent years by committee chairs Deb McManus, Kathy Horner, and Becky Dries, and chaired by Deb when the event moved online this past year. Building on a holiday craft fair that began in 2003, the Stocking Stuffer Committee has created a tradition that raises sorely needed funds, has created a tradition that raises sorely needed funds to help the Historical Society maintain the mansion and its programs, and also to pay homage to the history of the Center Furnace Mansion. Moses and Mary Thompson and their children occupied the mansion in the mid to late 19th century, a time when Americans were eagerly embracing the Victorian Christmas celebrations evolving in England. The Victorian age placed a high value on family, so it followed that the Christmas holiday would be celebrated in the home with festive decorations, special treats, gift giving, music, and merriment. After the restoration of the mansion began in the latter part of the 20th century, some holiday soirees were held there. Honey Jaffe, Sandy Byam, and Beth Ricker, Ricker were among the volunteers who saw an early opportunity to do more. And in 2003, they began the stocking stuffer that featured the works of local artists and craftsmen in the mansion, which was decked out for the holidays. The popularity of the event snowballed, and within a few years it had become the Historical Society's signature event and largest fundraiser. Then the docent and garden committees became involved in all facets of planning. In recent years, the area's finest florists have generously donated the interior decorations for the event, transforming the mansion into a confection of Victorian wreaths, trees, and garlands, popping with fruits, flowers, and ribbons. In 2015, longtime volunteers Kathy Horner, Deb McManus, and Becky Dries took over the coordination of the stocking stuffer. With retail and business backgrounds and minds for bookkeeping, they took the event to a new level. From the promotion of the stocking stuffer to the redesign of traffic flow patterns inside the mansion, they brought a keen understanding of how to grow the event without losing the warmth, charm, and intimacy that has made it a holiday tradition in Center County. They've also transformed the stocking stuffer from its modest beginning as a craft fair to a four day long holiday market that channels the camaraderie and hospitality that the Thompsons were well known for. The magic happens that happens during this extended weekend takes months of planning. Typically by June, Deb and Kathy have begun <coughs> lining up vendors, choosing overall themes, designing invitations, working on crafts and planning events. By early fall, the mansion staff, Mary Sorensen and Johanna Sedgwick, have recruited and scheduled close to 100 volunteers. They also direct the week-long remodeling of the mansion interior as furniture is moved or stored to make way for the dozens of artisans. When a long-anticipated weekend arrives, the stocking stuffer co-chairs have often put their day jobs on hold to oversee the sprawling marketplace and the busy schedule of events. Becky Dries directs the small army of cashiers, training them on the use of iPads, calculators, and apps like Square that have replaced the scratch pads and manual receipts of days gone by. And at the end of each day, she's like our own Bob Cratchit, among the last of the crew to leave the mansion as she reconciles the day's receipts. Thanks to the incredible efforts of Deb, Kathy, and Becky, 
dozens of volunteers, and the mansion staff who have made the stocking stuffer possible for the past 17 years, the event now funds more than 20% of the Historical Society's annual operating expenses. What's more, the Victoria era ambiance transports visitors to another century. And although the societal changes and technological advancements have changed our holiday customs, the Stocking Stuffer Committee manages to recreate the sense of family that our 19th century ancestors enjoyed. Here to present this year's President's Award is the President of our Board of Governors, Bob Hazelton. Thank you, Katie. I am always amazed at the Stocking Stuffer Committee, how well they transform the mansion into this big Christmas card. They create a significant fundraiser and do that on a wonderfully social environment. Even this year in face of the, of the virus, we had a successful online event. So on behalf of the Center County Historical Society, it is my pleasure to present this year's President's Award to the 2020 Stocking Stuffer Committee, being Deb, Kathy, and Becky. And thank you ladies for a phenomenal job and accepting the award for the committee is the 2020 Chair, Deb McManus. Deb? Thank you, Bob. Thank you to the committee for choosing us. Um, many years ago, we started with um, a very humble sale and have been able to grow it through the efforts of so many volunteers. Um, our past president, Jackie Melander, arrived one evening at our preview party and said, this is magic. And that's what the stocking stuffer is. It's kind of magic. So um, I'm saying thank you, but I certainly could never do this alone. Thank you so much to Kathy Horner and to Becky Dries and to all the volunteers who contribute to this. It's our really our signature event. And hopefully once this virus is beyond us, we can go back to this and create the magic again. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. I think we're all looking forward to going back to the magic again and <laughs> a real appreciation for the fact that there was so much magic in our lives before. Our final recognition today is the Jacqueline J. Melander Award. It's been given each year since 2015 to the person or people who best exemplify Jackie Melander's legendary devotion to historic preservation. As many of you know, Jackie was the longtime president of the Historical Society, and she has made significant contributions to preservation at the local, regional, and state levels, not least of which was overseeing the restoration of the Center Furnace Mansion in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and early aughts. This year's winner of the Melander Award is likewise a preservationist whose impact can be seen all over Center County and beyond, Alan Popovich. Yes, that Alan Popovich, the one you've already heard about because of his role in preserving the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial in Belfont. Well, it turns out that project just scratches the surface of Alan's contributions to Center County. Alan first arrived in Center County as a Penn State freshman art major. When his dad convinced him that he would never make a living as an artist, Alan, well, he quit. He moved to Florida and got a job in construction, becoming a card carrying union member and acquiring skills that would serve him well when he eventually became an architect. He returned to Center County in the 1970s and became a graduate student of Denson Grunendahl, who Alan credits with awakening his interest in historic preservation. Professor Grunendahl's specialties in Penn State's College of Arts and Architecture include historic preservation, restoration and rehabilitation heritage project development, preservation technology, and interpretive planning. These would also come to be Allen's specialties. One of his first projects under Professor Grunendahl's tutelage was the Pennsylvania Courthouse Study, where he helped to complete architectural drawings and computer analyses of every courthouse in the state with an eye to both preservation and recommendations on how the interior and exterior spaces could best be used. Allen has been preserving, restoring, and rehabilitating ever since as the principal architect at AP Architects. He approaches each project, not just as fixing up or strengthening some old structures or artifacts, but is seeking to identify the holes in history by understanding the social forces and cultural meanings that shaped the era, including the technology, education, transportation systems, and economy. 
For example, in his restoration work on the Thompson Granary in Lamont, he explored why John Thompson brought a railroad through Lamont and established a station there rather than Scotia. The Granary Project is also an example of the long view that Allen takes in his work. Encouraging community input and working with the Lamont Village Association, he helped to create a plan that not only provided for the restoration of the granary, but for its economic viability through events such as the Haunted Granary, a wildly popular Halloween fundraiser in the 1990s. With its village green and reinforced structure, the Thompson Granary serves a different function than it did in the 19th century, but it is once again the heart of the Lamont community. That's a key component of Allen's work, preserving historic structures by integrating them into modern life and maintaining the building's relationship to the community. To appreciate the scope of Allen's legacy, let's take a tour of some of the sites where he has led the design team in award-winning preservation work. In 1998, the Sarney Tennis Center got a facelift. The project included renovation of an existing historic barn and brooding house which became a clubhouse and locker room facility befitting Penn State's entry into the Big Ten. In 2004, the Center County Courthouse restoration was a three-phase project that involved reconditioning the doors and windows, restoring the portico, roof, and stucco, and redesigning the public courtyard. Also in 2004, the Brockerhoff House slate roof was replaced. Allen guided the documentation of both the replacement slate and the existing roof of the building, which was constructed in 1866 in a combination of Second Empire, Queen Anne and Italianate architecture. In 2005, he led the renovation of the 1887 W.F. Reynolds and Company Bank Building in Belfont. After converting the banking floor into a courtroom and adding judges chambers and other offices on the second floor, the historic building now serves as the Center County Courthouse Annex. In 2010, Allen worked with the Rock Hill School Association to renovate the one-room schoolhouse built in 1893. The school has since been reopened as a community center, bicycle path rest stop, museum, and school district learning center. Allen has also been a generous contributor of his time and talents through his public service. He has sat on the State College Borough's Historic Architectural Review Board. He served on the Faculties Committee of the State College School District Citizens Advisory Board. And he was on the Board of Appeals of Center County PAUCC or Uniform, Uniform Construction Code. Currently, Allen serves on the Board of Governors of the Center County Historical Society. One of his projects there is heading up the effort to replace the deteriorating mansion roof. As with many other projects, this one represents Allen's devotion, not just to preserving the past, but interpreting it and integrating it with the present. Now, Allen is a self-confessed junk collector. He likes old stuff, but he sees the value not in the artifact itself, but in the story that it tells about the human experience. The body of Allen's work tells many stories about Center County's past. And thanks to his preservation efforts, those stories will be told for generations to come, including to Jack and Nora, who are still a little young to appreciate the amazing impact their grandfather has had on Center County. And now to present the Melander Award is our former president for whom this recognition, recognition is named, Jackie Melander. I couldn't be more pleased to be presenting this award to Alan because he really brings the story into history through architecture. He has assisted so many communities and certainly currently with the uh, board of the Historical Society. Um, I, I think what Katie has reviewed and all of those photographs suggest Alan is far reaching. He's um, He's a master at um, bringing communities together, and he's also a really nice guy. So I am delighted to be presenting the Jacqueline Relander Award to Ellen Popovich for this year. Thank Alan, you. would you like to say a few words? Yes, I will. And under the guidance of Katie and Mary, they said, please, a few words, and I will honor that. So thank you, Katie. Um, 
I really am truly honored and humbled to be receiving this award and want to thank certainly the awards committee, the board of governor, and really all the members of our society for their continued support of historic preservation, because without your support, this forum, this forum we have right now would not exist. And certainly congratulations to all the recipients of the awards and really to Katie Ford, Mary, for such a beautiful presentation today. I also want to thank those whom over the years I have given me an opportunity to work on projects, whether they're small, large, that continue to preserve our cultural and architectural resources, knowing that the efforts we put forth today ultimately shape tomorrow's heritage. So again, I would like to thank all of all and want to say in accepting this award, I do so with accepting it and sharing it with our entire Board of Governors and with Jackie, whom even in these most challenging of times continues our pursuit to build appreciation and preservation of our county's cultural and our natural heritage. So thank you, Katie. I think we should all unmute for a moment and, and have a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. And Mary, I'll turn it back to you. Oh, thank you so much, Katie. Um, uh, this was just a, an, an amazing group of, of award recipients. I, I want to thank all of them who helped preserve our historic sites and, and histories and here in Center County. Um, and I also would just like to give uh, thanks to CNET for filming today's program and to the Center County government for um, sponsoring that filming. And, um, and special thanks go to um, Will Yerman for, um, for doing the, the wonderful portrait photography that is used in, in the, the awards and um, to David Lembeck for graphic design and, and also to the awards committee um, co-chairs Katie O'Toole who, who has uh, become indispensable in this program uh, and, uh, and Ford Risley who has teamed up with, um, with Katie to interview nominees um, and, uh, and help with the program, but also committee members, Bob Hazelton, Jackie Melander, Dick Pensick, and, uh, and others who, who dive in periodically to help out with this program. And um, I'm sorry, I, I've been like chewing, uh, walking and chewing gum or the inability of it today in, in the program and trying to do the slides, but um, here's the, the listing of those, those folks. Um, I also just want to, I also want to point out that we have some upcoming programs um, that are going to be held virtually on Zoom like this one is today. And, and you can see the lineup, um, uh, which is uh, also available online on our, on our website at centerhistory.org. Um, and that's all I have today. Uh, Katie, if you have any other words or if anyone else would like to say a few words. Just a one last congratulations to everyone. Congratulations. Wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll close. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.